What's up, YouTube? Today, I'm going to show you how I made this cool text template in After Effects using only built-in After Effects effects. Kind of a mouthful, but it's very simple. You can make this in less than five minutes, just like I did, and you can add your own flavor to it. This is the first part of an ongoing series that will cover every single after effects effect and this is the very first one on the list not including external plugins that you have to pay for everything you'll learn will be completely free and usable in all your future projects so without further ado let's jump right into after effects and learn how i made this cool text effect in not that much time okay so we are in after effects and we're looking at the composition that i made for this tutorial We'll see that we have some darkened edges from a vignette and the text is animating on with this cool digital effect and we're using a preset that's already built into After Effects so we can save a ton of time since most of the work is already done for us. To start, what we're gonna do is click on Create New Composition. Down here, call this Tutorial Comp. Set that not to 4K, 1920 by 1080 frames. We'll set that to 30 frames per second. Uh, resolution shouldn't be full most of the time, but my computer is a big baby, so we're gonna keep it at quarter, so we can keep things rendering quickly. Click OK, we're in our new tutorial composition. We'll hit Control Y on the keyboard to make a new solid. Uh, make comp size, so 1920 by 1080, we'll call this the background. Like I said earlier, we are using all built-in After Effects in After Effects. So what we're gonna do is go to our effects and presets panel and click on animation presets. Now I have some plugins that I already purchased. If you don't have those, don't worry. You'll see a folder called backgrounds. We'll go into the backgrounds folder and click on apparition, drag that onto our background folder or layer rather. Most of our work is done here. If you hit U on your keyboard, it will reveal the animation for this effect. Pretty simple, background's already done. Next, we'll add our text, and we'll just click on the text tool or hit Control T on the keyboard and add some text. Cool, so there's some text. I will make this more fun. I like tacos, all right. So, I like tacos is not very interesting right now. So what we're gonna do is first, we're going to put this into a new composition. To do that, we can go to composition and click on pre -com I'm sorry, edit. Hmm, interesting. I normally do this by, there we go. Keybinds, Control Shift C is what I normally press. Precompose, or just hit Control Shift C, or you can right click and click on Precompose. Text composition, and this is where we're gonna do most of our animation. So, what we'll do first thing is we will Control K to open up this composition settings, and we're gonna set this to 13, or 3840 math by 2160 because that is double 1920 by 1080 or 4K resolution. Click OK. So it makes things a little bit smaller because it's changing the position, but that's okay. We'll make this a 3D layer and we'll open up two properties. We'll hit P to open up the position, then hold Shift T to open up the opacity. We'll bring this back in Z space or away from us in Z space by pushing it forward. And it doesn't really matter, like say 4,000 somewhere, 5,000 somewhere in there. Make it keyframe at the first frame and we'll set the opacity to zero. We'll move forward 15 frames by hitting shift page down once and then page down five times. One, two, three, four, five. Make a second pair of keyframes and we'll reset the position by right clicking and then we'll set the opacity back to 100. Next what we'll do is we'll go say five or four, four seconds, 15 frames, give or take, because we know that our animation on our background is about five seconds. 
we'll go 15 frames before that make another keyframe and we'll pull it towards us just a little, little bit so comes towards us and then on the last 15 frames we want it to fly at us by br pulling it towards us towards a negative number until we don't see anything anymore how's that animation look great comes towards us and pulls out we'll select all the keyframes by hitting the position icon or text here so it'll select everything we'll hit f9 on the keyboard to easy ease all those keyframes then we'll go into the graph editor and just tighten things up we'll make it move towards us faster by pulling the influence handles to ease out or ease into the animation fast and then slow down and then speed way up as it comes out so give that a quick watch comes out flat quick and then comes towards us quickly okay so that's done what we're gonna do next is we're gonna add the actual text effects to uh, make it seem a little bit more interesting so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our effects and presets once again and we'll look up point control drag that onto our text composition and then what we're going to do is we're going to add a displacement map cool so that is going to set us up to work with a displacement map which we're going to make next so to do that we're going to use the same effect that we just did so we'll take our background background We'll duplicate that, or we could just make a new solid by hitting Control Y, and then we'll call this Displacement Map, and literally add the same effect that we did just a moment ago. Apparition under the background animation presets. Set that there, great. Let's solo this by hitting the little dot icon, and we'll turn this to block. Block is under noise type, excuse me. Good, so we have some blocks on screen. We'll turn the complexity down to two just so it renders a little bit faster. And we're gonna make sure we're gonna work on the first keyframe of this animation by dragging everything back so it matches everything. We're going to go under the evolution options and change the random seed because right now the evolution is being calculated at the same rate as the background with all the same numbers. So we're just gonna change that to like I don't know, it doesn't matter. Any other number, just so it's a little bit different, adds a little bit more life to the animation. Next, what we'll do is we'll go to the transform on the very first keyframe. We'll make it a lot thinner and smaller, just a lot smaller in general. And then it gets wider, 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 or taller. But I like it wider personally, so let's bring down that scale height a little bit but and then bring up the width and then we will move the offset turbulence further to the right and at the very first keyframe bring it over this way and maybe bring it down so we're getting this like panning up sort of and it's a little disorienting and I know it's like why how are, how is this gonna apply to our actual text effects bear with me it will make sense in just a second so we have this displacement map here and the way we're gonna apply this to our text composition is we will unsolo that layer turn it off and we'll see that we don't see the displacement map there which is good because it's still there we can collapse all that stuff. Oh, and one more quick thing. We do need to turn off the tritone of the displacement map layer. So if you go turn the displacement map layer back on, we'll see under the effects in the preset of the apparition effect is a tritone effect. We have to turn that off. Otherwise, displacement maps will not work as well as they should. Turn off the tritone so it is just black and white. We'll turn that layer off, but it's still there. 
we will go to our effects and presets panel with our text effect well actually if you don't have the displacement map on your text then you will have to add it but it's there otherwise you can find that in your effects presets we'll set the displacement map layer to our displacement map and we'll set the source to the effects and masks now what we'll see is the displacement map it's very subtle right now, but it's adding a small amount of displacement. But if we crank this number up, it's really changing that number or the amount in which the text is displaced. So if we just crank that up a whole ton, it's just going nuts right there. A little too much. But what we're going to do, because there's a little problem with this, you'll see that when you move the displacement, placement of the x or y is going to move the text and that's why we have the point control here so for the point control first we're going to set this to 960 by 540 because that is the resolution half of the resolution of our original composition we'll go into the position of the text layer by hitting p alt click on the stopwatch and we're going to define a couple variables. So we'll hit P on the keyboard, hit equal sign, and then we'll pick whip this to the point control. We'll end that statement, that variable with a semicolon, hit enter. Then we'll hit X equals the displacement of the displacement map using the little pick whip. Then Y equals the vertical displacement the up and down how much is going to displace the pixels up and down close that hit enter twice just to see where you're working with you're going to set p which is the point control value 960 by 540 which is going to affect this position then minus brackets because p is an array where we have two variables and then X and Y here are single variables, so we have to put them in array by putting them in the square brackets. Then we will set X, comma, Y, close brackets, and enter. Boo boo, should have put an equal sign right there, and voila. So now what's happening is if we move the displacement, it's gonna move the actual displacement amount, but it's not going to move the text around because what we did just a moment ago is we set the text composition to be at 4k resolution so it's if you look we're actually moving the composition but the actual what we want from the composition the text is staying directly in the center so it's moving the position based on these two numbers math hard i know just practice this a couple of times and you'll understand what i'm going for so now if we play this back at the five second mark let's just set our work area cool so we're getting that same effect great the only problem is it's kind of going in that one direction based on these numbers so what we'll do is we'll alt click on the max horizontal displacement we'll set that to wiggle i don't know let's say five times per second and then the amount let's say 300 sure and then we'll do the same thing for the vertical oh let's set that originally to zero and then vertical wiggle a uh, little bit less for the vertical because we have less room so maybe like three comma 100 cool and we'll set that originally back to zero and then it's kind of staying and it's going all over the place because of the wiggle effect. Sweet, we're almost done. Last couple of things just to add a little bit of flavor, a little bit of life to this. We'll go back to our effects and presets. Look up star burst or star. I never remember star. Yeah, CC simulation star burst. And what we're going to have to do, because, uh-oh, what happened? But we see the little dots everywhere. We'll turn the scatter down to zero and the speed down to zero. And then we'll see that has like this little dot effect sort of thing. Cool. To make this stand out a little bit more, we'll look up glow. 
add that, we'll turn the intensity way up. Turn the threshold down a little bit more. And there we go. We have this cool digital effect that you could use for, a, like I said, horror movie, something else. Or like, obviously this color doesn't work. Maybe we could change this color to, let's go back into the text comp. Uh, go to character, set this to, I don't know, like, um, let's see, like a dark gray, blue sort of thing. How does that look? A little hard to see. Let's go back. Brighten it up. Oh, that looks even less hoary. But it, you get the idea. You can do a lot of cool things with this. Super easy. And all we did was use everything in After Effects. And it took less than 10 minutes. Something like that. And if you need like a nameplate, like an executive producer, your name, right there, you you can do that. So this was the first of a series of After Effects tutorials where we're going to go over all over the immense library of After Effects effects starting from the background. And then we're just going to go straight down, maybe get into the plugins. But right now, I think this is a good start because there's so many tools that you can use in After Effects. And I wish I knew about all these when I was starting out. And if this is helpful to you so that you don't have to test every single one, let me know. Thank you so much for watching. My name is John Jags Knee, and I will see you in that next tutorial where we will be covering how to do something cool with uh, the blocks effect. And we'll see you that next time. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.